I have a train CVHF refrigerant cool VFD open loop system. My cooling tower is a tower tech. I'm having issues with the high pressure compressor surge. My first diagnostics. I found my cooling tower circulation pumps VFD on bypass, not auto, which I then put on auto. But while I was performing a diagnostics, I put on hand and ramped them up because I'm not because I'm getting a lot of air in the system. Okay, so you put the pumps back in hand and you force the or the yeah, you force the flow up. Hmm, that's an interesting. Okay. I also ran the system for about 20 minutes and I found my saturation temperature at 70 degrees and my pressure differential was at 7 degrees, which at the time should have been at negative 3, right? So as of right now, I'm getting, I got my, he says purse, I think he means purge unit running consistently for the last 72 hours, added a ref tech purging system with a filter dryer and moisture indicator on my vapor inlet and a filter dryer on my liquid outlet. Uh, going to my liquid line, got to go back for a startup. Uh, any recommendations? Or do you think there is anything I missed? Uh, there is a lot of air in this system. You've got a CVHF. You're having trouble with it dealing with high pressure and surge. The pumps were in hand, it sounds like. You, you put them in auto. And so let's, let's pause there first. I would be cautious defaulting to putting drives in auto if I don't already know what's driving the auto piece of it. So one of the things to keep in mind is the automation system may be struggling and you may not have a system that needs a variable loop. You may not have a variable flow set up. So at that point, unless you just know that that plant should be running in auto and there's a properly tuned control loop in the, in the automation system that is monitoring where that speed needs to be for the pump, for flow and GPM and such, I wouldn't recommend just automatically just putting it in auto without further having any other context. Now, maybe you have that context. It wasn't uh, obvious to me in the way you broke that down that we did, but so I would be cautious of that, first of all. Now, ramping that back up makes sense because then we're increasing our GPM and our differential across the, uh, the heat exchanger. And so having a high, um, having a, a surging and high pressure issues that makes a lot of sense that we're going to get that. Now I'm assuming you walked into this plant probably already having surging problems from the sounds of the conditions, that is true. So I get the, the thought process. What I would rather see is that my uh, pressure differential, even if the pumps are in hand, fine, leave them in hand. I'd rather see that my DP across the condenser is within range. And if you don't know, if it's a smaller tonnage, you know, somewhere in the three to five, six PSID has been kind of just a baseline for your smaller, you know, less than a thousand ton machines. And as they scale, that's going to change a bit. That would be my, one of my first points. I, I care way more about what is my DP in that circumstance than what speed is my pump being allowed to run at and does it need to be a variable speed or not. Honestly, if I'm dealing with a surge condition in the first place like that, I would much rather keep the pump in hand so that it is consistent because I don't want the pump trying to vary and modulate to be then be another factor that I'm having to calculate into my troubleshooting. It just becomes far more complicated at that point. For those who may not know about what's being referenced in the 70 degrees versus the 7 degrees on the pressure differential. So on these trains, there is an actual liquid line sensor that's that's where we're pulling our saturation refrigerant temp from. So that sensor is 
right down in here, right? So this is your liquid line drop leg. This is the first phase of the flash. So you've got a flash plate in here. So we go into a medium pressure, but right in this little section here, this is where you've got a liquid line sensor. That sensor is where these machines are pulling their refrigerant saturation temperature from. Now, for a lot of your modern machines, you will actually have a condenser pressure transducer. Some of your older ones didn't, but this was something that the newer ones do. So you can take these. If, if your machine doesn't have a transducer, then you would end up connecting a, uh, a pressure gauge to the top of the condenser, pulling your condenser pressure, and then you're going to compare that to this saturation uh, temperature and see where they're at. Now, he's indicating that those are set, there's a seven degrees of saturation difference, which is a indicator that we do have a lot of atmosphere in the chiller, which that atmosphere is going to cause significant head pressures to rise, surging problems, like a lot of the symptoms that he's currently uh, describing, that's where those uh, symptoms are going to be coming from. So that's what's being referenced there in terms of saturation and the pressure differential was at seven degrees. So that would just scale out on a saturation scale. So going the route of, okay, we need to get a purge system online. So in terms of recommendations, that would be one of my next steps is I do want to verify, one, is the onboard purge working correctly? Is the, the temperature sensor on the, on the uh, suction line for that train system being the earthwise uh, purge, is that suction line on the purge unit actually reading correctly? Because that'll have a huge impact on whether or not we're pumping out correctly. So did we verify that sensor? Have we verified that the purge filter is actually working as well? Uh, so that's gonna help draw the, the, the moisture specifically out of it. But what I've, I've actually seen those, if they don't get changed routinely, maybe, maybe yours has, but if they don't, uh, I've seen it to where they can actually start to plug up and you'll see you start running really high liquid levels inside of your non-condensables evaporator chamber. Like they'll, your liquid levels will start rising. There's a little sight glass there. You'll see that those levels start getting high in there. That could be a symptom of that filter dryer uh, getting stopped up. So is that clear? Are the valves clear? So what I mean by valves is there's an isolation valve on the liquid drain valve and there's an isolation valve on the uh, hot gas intake valve for the purge system. Are those actually open? Are they working? Uh, that'd be another thing I'd want to confirm. So I, like just an overall, is the purge system working? And I would end up going through a troubleshoot process until I felt s confident that it was. Now, I'm, I'm really glad that you put one of the RefTech uh, portable purges on it. Those are actually fantastic. And the, you also put the dryers on it as well. That was another good move. The dryers specifically are going to help with the moisture aspect of it more than anything. So if you are having a lot of moisture latent issues for some reason, which if you're drawing in a lot of atmosphere, that will happen. You will start to accumulate moisture in the system. That's why these dryers need to be there. So this is just my opinion. If your focus is getting the non-condensables out and less about there being a moisture issue, which are somewhat different, then I probably would worry less about the dryers because those will slow down the non-condensable removal process because now we're trying to process through those additional dryers. Again, if we're worried about moisture, the dryers make a lot of sense. If we're more worried about the non-condensables and getting those out of the system, then I would be more worried about just letting that purge just rip through that those non-condensables and getting them out of there. But having the RefTech portable purge is a really good next step there as you did. Now keep in mind that the if you're keeping the chiller online and allowing it to run, which you mentioned that you let it run for about 20 minutes. So keep this in mind that the onboard purge is only the most effective when the, the chiller is actually online and running because they're pulling at a midpoint on the condenser. So if we come back over here, you can actually see the purge uh, vapor line you can see the the, um, the isolation valves here right so they're pulling off of a midpoint on the condenser they're not pulling off of the top so with the chiller off those non-condensables are going to be stacking in the top not down here at the midpoint the reason they're at the midpoint is with the machine online and running 
the non-condensables due to the discharge gas getting pushed down and hitting this distribution rail and getting forced, they're going to be heavily concentrating right here as the refrigerants getting pushed through the system and getting processed. They're not going to spend as much time stacking in the top, but with the chiller off, the non-condensables are going to rise and they're going to spend a lot more time hanging out at the top of the condenser barrel. So I would want, or that's where the portable purge really comes into play is you can hook it up, connect it to the R service ports on the top of the, of the barrel and then um, allow it to, to really process that down without having to risk the chiller itself any further. Now, the other side of this is, okay, so you've, you've done all of this. Why is that atmosphere in there to begin with? That's one of my next big questions is, okay, we know it's there. Why is it there? We really need to figure that out too because this could be an annual maintenance thing. Keep that in mind. You don't specify what region you're in or what your climate conditions are like. Maybe this is a fresh seasonal startup, which at that point, I wouldn't say this is, it's not a good thing, but it's not necessarily abnormal. What's important though, is if you have a machine like that and you are doing a seasonal startup for the warm season, you really want to plan to do that pre-purge ahead of time and specifically using that portable purge system to do that, not waiting until the chiller tries to turn on and destroy itself. Now that's up to the customer, right? We don't actually have control over something to that detail. They've got to decide to allow us to come in and do that routine seasonal thing. If this was a seasonal, I'd give it a little more leniency, okay? If this is not a seasonal and this chiller has been online consistent enough in recent months, but now it's got all this atmosphere, why is that atmosphere there? We So at that point, that, that's where you get into, I would recommend doing a pressurization. So get a pressurizer, hook it up, pressurize that chiller, and leak search the heck out of that thing. Figure out what it's called. And it could be something simple, right? There's been some of these cases where the oil filter canister wasn't spun on just right, and it was causing a leak there. Or there could be just a simple a gasket or bolt somewhere or the a maintenance was recently done and the purge dryer didn't get reinstalled just right and the little o-rings in there maybe one of them got pinched i've had that before machine stacks up you start doing some leak searching you find it it's an easy fix just throw a new o-ring or, or address whatever it is didn't always especially if this was sudden like this machine's done really well Nothing crazy has happened recently, and now all of a sudden we're having these major issues with atmosphere getting into the system. Well, then I would want to go to, okay, well, that sounds like potentially a maintenance-related issue. Maybe one of the valves that was used to take an oil sample during maintenance didn't close or seat all the way. Maybe the cap got forgotten to put back on, and that valve is leaking. Now it, it was able to sit for a period of time and draw a bunch of atmosphere in. There's a lot of valid reasons that doesn't mean the worst case scenario but we need to verify that so yeah once you get to where you can start up that's great like we it's good to get the machine running i really care about why this was necessary in the first place is it a purge unit uh, problem for the chiller itself what kind of leak are we dealing with in the first place i care more about the dp than what the vfd speed is on my pump. 